Welcome to Organic Chemistry 2 Synthesis. Um, in this lecture, now you will remember from the uh, brief introduction to amines in the last lecture that amines were referred to as alkaloids, yeah? so alkaline ashes of plants. Um, so they are uh, alkaline or basic. Yeah? In fact, all amines are weak bases, they are more or less weak. Um, so it means in aqueous solutions uh, um, of amines we get uh, protonation of the amine by water and generation of hydroxide anions. Yeah, so let's draw that in. Uh, we have our nitrogen lone pair yeah, that can pick up proton and like so we are generating our hydroxide and the corresponding so-called conjugate acid. Now it is common uh, to discuss the, uh, the basic character of amines uh, by reference to this uh, pKa value, yeah? uh, to the, uh, in particular to the pKa value of a conjugate acid. That means uh, we're referring here to the acid ionization constant. Yeah? Um, so uh, um, essentially uh, what would happen if uh, our conjugate acids, acid were to interact with a water molecule well, the water molecule would get protonated here in this case, yeah. And the rate constant for this protonation, uh, I'm just going to call here our Ka, yeah. So we can now um, calculate this rate constant for this uh, for this acid ionization. So the rate constant for this protonation reaction is Ka equals the concentration of our methyl amine times the concentration of H3O plus in the solution divided by the starting materials and here this is the concentration of our conjugate acid, CH3, NH3+. Yeah, why is the concentration of water not in there? Yeah, because we are an aqueous solution, so we assume to, uh, the uh, um, water concentration to be constant one. Yeah? So if we do that for this case, yeah, for a case of methyl amine, we get a rate constant of 2.29 times 10 to the power of minus 11. Now, now you will remember going from Ka to pKa is essentially taking the negative decadic logarithm of the Ka value, yeah, that will get get us our pKa, and here it will be 10.6 approximately, yeah, 10.64, right. So um, as a general note, yeah, um, if the pKa value of a conjugate acid is low, yeah, then the corresponding amine is a poor base and vice versa. Yeah? So here you have some overview of primary, secondary and tertiary amine pKa values. Yeah? Tertiary amines are in fact the weakest bases of these three yeah? uh, because uh, yeah, you have three sterically, well, sterically demanding substituents depending on their character that hinder hydrogen bonding between this nitrogen lone pair and water. Let us now compare the uh, basic character of aliphatic amines with that of um, aromatic amines. Yeah? So here we have two examples. One of them is um, our aliphatic amine. Yeah? So this one is cyclohexylamine. And our aromatic amine is aniline. 
Yeah, and in uh, aqueous solution, in both cases, we generate our conjugate acids, and we find that for our aliphatic amine, the pKa is uh, 10.66, and for our aromatic amine, yeah, the pKa is 4.63 only. Now, what does that mean? It means effectively that the conjugate acid of aniline is a stronger acid yeah, now that's a difference in pKa values of roughly 6, so it's a stronger acid by 10 to the power, uh, power of 6, yeah, and cyclohexyl amine on the other hand, yeah, is a stronger base, yeah, by the same order of magnitude. Now there are two ways how uh, to think about this difference. Yeah? So one of them is, uh, as I'm showing here on the left hand side, is that we are breaking uh, resonance stabilization yeah? uh, by protonation. Yeah? So you can think um, about the uh, uh, pi system on our um, aromatic amine is overall conjugated. So here in this case um, the nitrogen lone pair participates in this uh, pi, um, uh, pi resonance yeah, and we have an effectively sp2 hybridized nitrogen. Now in the aliphatic case our nitrogen is sp3 hybridized so by protonation we're not losing any delocalization effects. Yeah? The other way how to think about this um, is about availability of this nitrogen lone pair for protonation. Yeah? And as you can see here at the bottom of the slide, we can quite readily delocalize this nitrogen lone pair into the aromatic ring. Yeah? And even further, so we can really delocalize delocalize this uh, nitrogen lone pair all around the, the aromatic system. Now what about the uh, basicity of uh, aromatic heterocycle that contain amine functionalities? Well in this case we have uh, pyridine and the corresponding conjugate acid, yeah, pyridinium cation and what we see here is that the pKa is 5.2 yeah so it's slightly it's a slightly better base than aniline but why yeah so again think about um, uh, the potential to, uh, to break yeah resonance stabilization by protonation yeah so here in this case um, in the case of pyridine yeah what we essentially have so let me just quickly write this down, pyridine. Um, so in this case um, we have effectively an sp2 hybridized nitrogen yeah and what you see here is that the nitrogen lone pair is in a 90 degree angle yeah, to the uh, pyromatic molecular orbitals yeah so it does not contribute to the overall um, aromaticity of this of this um, uh, of this heterocycle. Yeah? So uh, we are not breaking any resonance yeah, by protonation. Um, what about imidazole? Yeah, this is here at the bottom of the K uh, of of the slide. So here we have a choice between two nitrogens, yeah, so which lone pair is protonated? Well, the one which is not part of the aromatic system, yeah. So we have uh, two nitrogen lone pairs, one over here and one over here, yeah. Now this nitrogen here, if you think about that, yeah, so this is, um, has effectively, well, you can think about it as four substituents, uh, two carbons, a hydrogen and its nitrogen lone pair, yeah. Um, 
and uh, uh, this nitrogen lone pair can indeed rotate parallel to the pyromatic uh, molecular orbitals. Yeah. So it is a part of the aromatic system. And this nitrogen lone pair over here, yeah, it's the same case as in our pyridine just above. So this, uh, this lone pair is orthogonal to the pyromatic molecular orbitals. So uh, it's that one that gets protonated. Yeah? So you're forming uh, your imidazolium ion here on this nitrogen. Yeah? So it can snatch, snatch up a proton. As you can see here, yeah, in this case, we have two electrons from the double from the carbon-carbon double bond, two electrons from the carbon-nitrogen double bond, and two uh, electrons from the nitrogen lone pair that participates here. Yeah, so aromaticity is preserved in the protonated state. And you see that reflected in the pKa value of this uh, imidazolium ion, which is 6.95. It's the last example we have here, guanidine, yeah, uh, strongest base among uh, charged neutral organic compounds. Um, and uh, its basic character yeah, uh, is chiefly because of the delocalization of a positive charge. Yeah? So as you protonate one of these amines here, let's just draw that in, you can very easily delocalize this positive charge here along the, uh, around the molecule. Yeah, so it means you generate a very stable cation, yeah, and as a consequence, guanidine is a very good base. Finally, um, let's uh, summarize the pKa values of some compounds in solution. Yeah, so you will have uh, this uh, this graph here as a separate page on your Keats pages, um, and it gives you a yeah a qualitative overview over the pKa values of some compounds that you have come across um, in organic chemistry one and two so far. Yeah? Um, what this table essentially shows you is uh, the um, yeah, acid ionization potential uh, of these compounds uh, in relation to their reaction with water. Yeah? So um, in other words, how to think about this is the stability of their corresponding leaving group. Yeah? So here in this case, yeah, um, uh, methane will never protonate water. Yeah? The leaving group CH3- will be simply way too reactive and too unstable. Same here yeah, for hydrogen gas. Yeah, the corresponding leaving group uh, would have to be H-, yeah, extremely reactive, yeah, hence a very poor leaving group. Same applies here just below. Let me just draw this in. For the uh, ally lanine, this is a leaving group, yeah, also extremely reactive, extremely unstable. Yeah, deprotonation here would result in the benzyl anion, yeah, likewise uh, very reactive, yeah, but uh, slightly slightly better stabilized than the ally lanine, as you know, yeah. Um, so as we as we go from uh, from carbon to nitrogen 
and to oxygen and to other uh, heteroatoms, yeah, what we see is a general decrease of pKa values. Yeah, this is because N, O, S heteroatoms are generally better, yeah, than carbon for supporting negative charges. Yeah, so NOS heteroatom is better at stabilizing negative charge than carbon. Right, now what is the stable good for? Well, uh, with these pKa values, we can uh, pretty much predict a good, a good base for deprotonation. So let's take a look at the case um, of a tertiary amine, yeah, and uh, the reaction of a tertiary amine with uh, carboxylic acid, yeah, so unsurprisingly we will deprotonate, uh, you know that we, we will deprotonate the carboxylic acid, yeah, but by how much? Well, um, I look into, the, into this table will tell you, so we take the values of the conjugate acid of our amine, yeah, and the pKa value of our carboxylic acid here, yeah, so these are approximate value, so a pKa of our conjugate acid of the amine is roughly 10. And the pKa for carboxylic acid is, well, approximately 5. Yeah, so what does that mean? Well, it means that our tertiary amine will almost completely deprotonate the carboxylic acid. Yeah. And in fact, it will do uh, do so yeah by pKa difference of five yeah so inverse negative decadic logarithm yeah so you will have ten to the power of five deprotonated molecules to one so a very good base indeed. So now that we understand a little bit about the physical and chemical properties of amines. Um, next time around, uh, we'll have a look at how to actually make them. See you next time.